Hello, my name is Michael Tobin. I am a YouTuber, commercial filmmaker, and basically been editing videos for the past like 15 years. In this series, whether you are brand new to video editing in general or new to Filmora, I'm gonna go ahead and get you acquainted with all the tools, tips, and tricks to make some amazing videos and content. Let's jump right into it. Alrighty, everybody, jumping in, we are on Filmora's website, and as you can see, Filmora 11 is the latest version currently out. Of course, you can scroll around the website, get a lot of great resources, tutorials, and uh, just learn everything there is to know about this software. But for now, we actually just wanna download it. So you can hit this download button up here and that's gonna automatically scan your computer to see if you need Mac or PC. And we can see it puts it right up there where I can install it. Or if you hover over this Filmora icon right here, you can click for Windows or for Mac and that will take you to the proper page as well, where you can either download it for free if you're just getting a feel for things, or if you wanna go ahead and purchase it. Of course, I already have it downloaded, so we're just gonna get that guy open right here, and you can see we are greeted with the opening screen where we're going to create new projects. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of different tools at the bottom here, and we're gonna get into those later on. They're pretty cool, but for now, we just wanna start out with a clean blank slate, and the first thing we need to do is choose our aspect ratio. If you have no idea what that is, it's basically the form factor of your video. I'm sure you've seen movies that have the black bars on top or bottom. You have 4.3, which is like the good old TV where it looked almost square, but not quite. And then of course, nine by 16 is gonna be your portrait uh, style for TikToks and YouTube shorts and Instagram reels and all that vertical content. However, the traditional method is 16 by nine widescreen, so we're gonna stick to that, and we are going to hit new project. This immediately is going to open up a blank new project in Filmora, and as you can see, if you've ever used any other editor, it is pretty much set up the same way. We have our viewer over here on the right, that's where this big black empty space is, that's where you're gonna play back all of your videos. On the bottom is our timeline. This is where we actually stack and create everything. On the left-hand side, we have our kind of media bin and project media files over here, which are organized into different folders. And at the top, we have all of our different tools that we'll use to create the video. So of course, it's default to my media, which we just talked about. If you need some good stock footage, GIFs, and just kind of fun things to add to your videos, extra elements, you can check those out in the stock page. We have audio, which of course is where you want to add different music. And of course you can import your own, but it's really nice to have a lot of royalty free uh, kind of library built right into here. We have titles, all really fun graphics that you can customize, video transitions, all sorts of effects, extra overlays and elements, and many different layouts for split screens and multiple cameras. And of course, we're gonna dive deep into all these different pages, but for now, let's just head over to the media page and begin. Now, the beautiful thing about video editing software is there's usually at least two to three different ways to do almost about anything. And so to import footage, we can either click right here where it says click here to import media, and it's going to bring up our uh, import folder there. We can also go up to file import media and import media files folder or from external devices. But the way that I like to do it is shortcuts. Now, a great way to learn shortcuts is basically by going up to all these different file menus here and anything that you see uh, different keystrokes next to, that is the shortcut. So for here, I'm on a Mac, so that is the command sign and I. So if I'm just in my browser here, I can hit Command I, and we can see that's going to bring up our import panel. I have some sample footage downloaded here, and so I'm just going to import this all. And we can see it quickly and efficiently imports everything. If I double click on anything, it automatically starts playing back in my viewer. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started by me actually going through and kind of just creating a little sequence. Now to start cutting together a video, you basically just wanna add clips to your timeline. So I'm just gonna grab one of these clips, drag them down here, but you know what? Sometimes you don't want the whole clip. Actually, most of the time you don't want the whole clip. If I just hit play here, 
we can see that there's a lot, you know, there's a pretty long clip. And if you keep your whole clip, it's going to be a boring video. So we only want parts of it. So we need to cut it up. And there's a couple ways to do that. Now, on the bottom here, uh, you can actually zoom into your timeline a couple different ways. I'm going to hit Command Plus because, again, I like shortcuts. It's the fastest way to do it. But if you like to use the mouse, over on the right-hand side here, you'll see this little uh, slider with plus and minus. You can also use that as well. And the nice thing is it will always zoom in to wherever your playhead is. What's your playhead? That is this little red line that basically follows where in the video you are watching. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the playhead, there is this little scissor icon and that's how you can actually go in and cut. So if I just click this right here, you can see it basically takes this one clip and makes two clips out of it. We performed our first cut here and then you can slide it somewhere else, click those scissors as well. And now we have three different clips. And so say you didn't want this middle piece, just hit that good old delete button and we can see that it performed what's called a ripple delete, where it essentially gets rid of that empty space that would have been there. And so now these two clips are right next to each other, and it's probably not going to make a lot of sense in this, but you can see it kind of cuts to where he shakes his hand. Now, continuing on with, there's two or three different ways to do everything uh, in here. There is indeed a shortcut for cutting. So basically put the playhead wherever you want and select your clip and hit command B, basically for blade. And uh, that's going to also make a cut right there. Now, again, it can get pretty messy if you just want to start importing all of your clips down here and cutting them up from here. So sometimes a more efficient way to do things is I'm going to delete it down here. And before we add something to our timeline, I'm going to double click on the clip in our media browser where it's going to start playing. And we are going to set what's called in and out points, basically the points in which you want the clip to start and stop. So in this one, for example, I want to go right before he turns the light on. So, yep, right about there. And I'm going to hit the I button. And we can see it puts this little... Uh, icon right here and that is basically our endpoint and I'll hit spacebar to play it again he walks in sees the kitchen and I think that's going to be my out point so I'm going to hit O for out and you can see it places that out point marker right there and now if I just click anywhere on this clip and drag from here to my timeline you can see that's much shorter and it only imported the section of the clip that I want. So I'm going to keep doing this uh, with all of our sample footage up here until we have just a really easy sequence. And done. All right, as you can see, we have an incredibly simple sequence here at the bottom. Let's go ahead and play some of it. We got the guy walking in. We got them shaking hands. Uh, they're talking about what ingredients or the recipe that they're going to be making. You may notice that this is not a very... Uh, engaging or fun video so far. So let's spice it up a little bit. One of the first things and most important things has to do with pacing. And so what I noticed is, for example, this clip right here is really long for this shot. You get really bored with this shot. I mean, it's a good like probably five or six seconds or something. And so what you can do is actually grab either end of the clip and then you're going to just bring it one way or the other. If you want to extend it, you bring it to the right shorten it, bring it to the left, and you'll notice all the other clips uh, come down with it too. Now before we move on to any effects or anything, for a video like this where the clips don't have audio themselves, so we're not worried about dialogue just yet, we want to add some music to really spice it up. So we're going to go over to our audio tab here, and again you can import your own music, but there's a lot of great selections in this existing library, so I'm going to pick something from here. Let me just sample some tunes. So I'm going to just grab this, drag it below my video. Audio always goes below video. And we're going to drag it until it's at the start. Now, of course, this song is a lot longer than our clip, so we can trim it just like we did our uh, video here if we wanted to. So I can 
hit that cut or hit command B, whatever you so choose. Now, again, we want to time this music up a little bit more to the video. So, for example, if I hit play here, kind of liked how the first chime uh, matched up with the uh, light switch being turned on. That was a cool little beat hit. And then you hear that other little like, you know, piano key like ding. What I want to happen is that be kind of cutting to the next shot. So you can actually look on the waveforms and that kind of tells the whole story of where your beats are. All those little spikes are uh, basically the higher notes or the beats that hit. So I can see on this first little spike, I want to put my playhead right next to it. And I'm actually going to grab right in between both of these clips here, and I'm going to slide it over until it snaps to the playhead. So now let's see what that looks like. Cool. Cuts right on the beat here. But you know what? These shots kind of look weird. Doesn't that look weird going from this to that? He kind of looks like he teleported there. And so this is where we're going to introduce the kind of clip inspector. And how we get to the inspector is if we just double click on our individual clip here, we're going to see a whole new set of tools. We have video at the top, we have speed, we have color, we have animation, all this cool stuff. But for this specific uh, shot, we're going to stick to the video and the transform. This is where you're going to scale things up. You can flip an image, rotate it if you need to. And basically, here's a pro little hack that I do all the time. When you only have one shot of something or one angle of something, you can actually kind of fake having multiple angles. And so what I'm going to do is actually select this second clip, and we are going to zoom in. So I'm going to scale it up just a bit. You don't want to go crazy because the more you zoom, you're actually zooming into the quality. And this... These clips here are only 1080p, they're only full HD, so the more I zoom, the more pixelated things are going to look. But the nice thing is you don't need to zoom in a lot for the effect to really happen, so uh, I'm going to zoom in like it's around 25%, and I'm actually going to change the position as well to kind of make them centered, but I don't want to go too far or else you start to see the edge of the frame uh, leaking in there, so you want to make sure you stay within the the video bounds. And now watch what happens when we play this back. He walks in. And so when it cuts to this, it kind of looks like a totally different shot, not just like he completely teleported. Now you can also play around with the timing. So right now this is a little bit slow motion of a shot, but if I double click again, then we can go into our inspector and now let's head to the speed tab. Now this speed ramping, changing up the speed, this is probably the most popular thing you see on social media now. So it's a good skill to learn how uh, to do. So the first thing is uniform speed, which simply means that it's going to uh, apply a change in the speed through the entire clip evenly. And so right now we are at 1x speed or 100%. But if I went to, let's say, 2x, which you can use the slider or for more accurately, you can just type in the value there. This is basically going to speed the clip up uh, by 200%. And so it's going to be double the speed. So we can think, see uh, chopping a bit faster. We can also slow it down. We can go 0.5 speed. And you can also reverse the speed here. So if I want to add some real visual interest, make it look like it's coming back together, you can reverse it. That's pretty cool. Now we talked about ripple editing before, but it's very important when you're changing the timeline as well. Now let's say we went through and we timed all of our clips to the music. Then you probably don't want ripple edit turned on because as you adjust the speed, you can see every time I do this, it pushes and pulls the clips afterwards. If I speed it up, all those clips come closer. If I slow it down, they go further away. And so if these were all previously timed to specific beats, it would really mess things up. And so what you want to do is I'll set this back to one times. 
is turn off ripple edits. And now if I, for example, make this faster, like five times, you can see it speeds this clip up and it just leaves an empty space, but it doesn't affect any of these other clips, which allows me just to fill this gap with other clips without having to completely reset uh, the beats on everything else. So make sure you pay attention to if you're ripple editing or not, because you may or may not want it to do that. All right, now let's talk about the ever so popular speed ramping. Speed ramping is where a clip uh, starts at one speed and throughout the clip kind of changes. You can see you have a bunch of different presets here, uh, but they're all customizable. It's really, really cool. So uh, this is a popular one here. If I click on it, you can see that you basically start a little slower than one speed. It looks around 80% or so. And then it's going to speed up and then it's going to slow back down and then slowly normalize. And we can watch it happen as we watch it. Do you see that? So and fast and slow and back to normal. And you always want to relatively go back to normal so that way it seamlessly goes into the next clip. But you can fully customize these. This is, I'll tell you what, of all the editing software that I've used, even the stuff that you make Hollywood movies with, speed ramping is not as simple as it is in here. So I can grab any of these points and maybe that was a little too fast. Well, I can bring this down and maybe I only want it to go two times as fast. So it just goes a little faster. And you know what? Maybe I want it even slower and I want the slowness to happen for longer. So I'm going to make it more gradual. So now it's going to go fast and really slow and then back to normal. So you can completely customize these and even save them as custom presets if you end up using one uh, all the time. So speed ramping is really fun to play with. You can apply it to any of these clips. If I select this one, this would probably be a good one. And maybe I want where it just gets slow. This one's kind of boxy. Maybe I want to round it out a little bit. Can make it more gradual. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Awesome. All right, so that is speed ramping. Now let's say we want to show multiple videos all at once. Maybe, multi you know, a lot of cooking shows, they'll have like a close up of what's on the plate, the person cooking it, a wide shot everything going at once, right? And so for that, we are actually going to go back to our normal menu, just kind of click anywhere that's not that clip, and you'll get all your regular tools back. We're going to go up to split screen here. And let's pick something cool, something, something that'd be interesting for this. I kind of like kind of like this one with the angular views. And we're going to drag that wherever we want. In this case, you know, it's it's at the end here. And then we're simply going to go back to our media. And now we're going to find our shots. All right. So once we've added that into our timeline, we are going to double click it. And you can see it basically has one, two and three for different quadrants. And when we double click it, we can see this blue line that's going all the way around this first quadrant here. And so that's asking us to grab the clip that we want to show in here. And so maybe, let's see, maybe it's this second chef here. And I'm just going to drag that over here. And what's cool is you can drag the clip around to kind of compose it the way that you want. So I'm going to put Mr. Chef Man right here. You can also zoom in and out, but keep in mind of your borders of your video you want to kind of show everything. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here. And then on the third one, I'm going to grab him looking the opposite way. And so now we can pick uh, maybe the cool fire one to go in the center. And again, I can reframe it here. We have our cool animation. Look at that. How cool is that? Now, I know what you're thinking, Michael. Well, what if you want a certain part of the clip to be used. Like in this first shot, he 
you know, is panning over to the right and then you kind of lose them and it's just this empty dead space. That doesn't look great. Well, you can customize that as well because Fillmore is awesome. So if I go ahead and double click the split screen uh, clip again, at the bottom left here, we are going to see an advanced option. I'm going to click that and it's going to bring up what looks to be a whole separate uh, editor menu and we can enlarge in this as well. And this is basically the split screen. So inside of here, you can change the clips for each of them. So maybe, you know what, I don't really like this first one. So I'm going to replace it with, you know, a shot of this. Well, and then at the bottom here, you can actually see all your three different layers. And when you click on them, it highlights which section they're in. So if I want a different part of the clip to go in, then I can just either move things around, grab the edge there to make it shorter. So now he's actually looking. And where you see these little diagonal lines, uh, that is basically the section of the clips that will be shown in the split screen. So it's basically the length of the clip down there. So all this empty space won't be played. Okay, right there. And we can see those adjustments were made. And the little animation comes in. He's looking right here, he's cooking here, and we got fire. And for the final basic tip of this video, we are going to change paces out of the kitchen. And I'm actually going to grab uh, one of my YouTube videos. Anyway, this is a video I did on the AirPods Max. And the only thing I wanna show you is when you import a video that has audio, you can see that's only taking up one layer, but we still see the waveforms at the bottom so that you can edit. So if you have any clips that you import that have dialogue or speaking or music built in, it's going to look like this rather than when you add music on the bottom. But maybe you don't want the audio of that clip and you only want the visuals of it. Well, you can detach and attach audio pretty simply. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on this clip. And right next to my mouse, you'll see detach audio. And boom. Simple as that. This is very helpful if you just want B-roll or visuals from one video, but not the audio from it. You can just detach it, delete, get rid of that audio, and then cut up, you know, this video the way you want to where you're only grabbing uh, maybe the shot that you specifically were looking for. And so now there's, there's no audio. All right, now since we did so much work today, before we leave this video, of course, we wanna save our project. And to do that, we can go up to File and hit Save or Save As, depending on if it's your first time. And you can see the lovely shortcut next to it. So again, if you wanna learn that stuff, Shift-Command-S is gonna be Save As for your first time. And you can basically just pick whichever folder you want. And, you know, I'm gonna call this kitchen scene two, since I made another one, and I'm just going to hit save. And it's a good general rule of thumb not to wait until you are all done with your video project to save it. Uh, honestly, every 10 or 15 minutes, if your kind of muscle memory gets used to just hitting command S, just to make sure that in case, you know, your power goes out and your computer turns off randomly or anything were to happen, you don't lose your project and many hours of editing. So save early and save often, my friends. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, stick around because we got a lot more to talk about. Thanks for joining me and thanks for watching.